We live in a hyper-connected world where life moves faster, but personal contact has slipped away. Slaves to instant messaging and online gratification, but disconnected from the real world. This group is techno-obsessed, dominated by the devices designed to improve our lives. The time has come to give up the gadgets and get their real lives back. They are cast into the wilderness of Canada's national parks and national historic sites for 31 days of personal discovery. No phones, no Wi-Fi, no escape. Challenged like never before. World traveler and outdoor adventurer Alan Bishop will lead these eight on the journey of a lifetime. They will be pushed to the limit and forced to explore the roots that the country grew from. They're in this together, but only one will rise to the top. This is Operation Unplugged. I'm Alan Bishop, and I'm the host of Operation Unplugged. For the last 25 years, I've been traveling the globe, trying to find adventure wherever I could find it. Whether it be on mountains, rivers, or in the ocean, I dive right in. I'm taking this group of eight through Canada's national parks and national historic sites because I want to push them to be different than they currently are. They're too attached to their devices. They're too attached to technology. This is their chance to change their lives and to help them reconnect with who they really are. This is the beginning. Strangers brought together by their obsessions. This is their last moment of isolation before they need to rely on each other. I've told them to conserve their energy and lap up the final moments with their precious devices. Nova Scotia's Kejimkujik National Park and National Historic Site is a world rich in stunning wilderness, old growth forests, winding waterways, and is steeped in First Nations history. Kejimkujik National Park Seaside boasts 22 square kilometers of protected Atlantic coastal wilderness. The interior features lakes and forests teeming with wildlife amidst turquoise waters and white sand beaches. Kejimkujik is the greatest spot to start our journey because of its vast and wide open spaces. We are really taking them out of everything they know and throwing them into pure Canadian wilderness. This is gonna test them like they've never been tested before. Eight people bound by technology are taking their first steps towards freedom. Cammer, 27 from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm always looking up what's new, what's happening. I miss bill payments by the iPad too. If I need to get something done, I'm not getting it done. My dad died when I was 10. I had my little sister to take care of, so I was always on the ball with her, trying to be a leader and a guide. I'm very spiritual. On this journey, I might be able to hold the hands of some other people. Chris, 42, from Ottawa, Ontario. I didn't grow up technically dependent. I'm an information junkie. We'd be sitting having a nice family dinner, and, you know, I'll get a text. It's a problem. It's led to some issues. Turn it off. No, I can't do that. I'm arrogant in my little world in flying. I had a pilot's license before I had a driver's license. Youth and enthusiasm versus old age and treachery. Daniel, 21, from Woodbridge, Ontario. How am I going to survive without technology in the wilderness? I'll tell you one thing, the drama. So I'll be talking to my boss and I'll pull up my phone and I'll just start texting. I guess it's part of me that really enjoys being prompt or reliable, that wants to provide people with like that immediate response. I am brutally honest. I'm very straightforward, I'm very blunt. I don't do well with hypersensitivity. I am never going to give up. Um, I say that now <laughs> with apprehension. Kat, 26, from Montreal, Quebec. What I love a lot is my computer. I don't watch TV. I'm not patient enough for TV. There's too many commercials. <laughs> the internet, just open another tab, that's it. Like, I've trained myself to have no attention. I'm a scientist and I do Dragon Boat. So I'm trying to understand our world. I really needed to be more than just 
average. I want to be, I want to perform. Vanessa, 21, from Montreal, Quebec. People need to know what I'm doing. And if I don't have my phone on me all the time, then how would that happen? I have my phone on vibrate or loud all day and all night. My phone has no more letters. Oh, when my phone was stolen, I cried for about five hours till I got home and demanded my mom to give me her phone. I'm used to giving up and I lack confidence in myself. So for the first time in my life, I want to prove to everyone that's not who I am. Alana, 30, from Vancouver, BC. I was the only one that broke meditation, made an excuse to go to the washroom, and I went to the car and checked my phone. Texting and driving is probably my worst habit. I need to be unplugged uh, because as a single mother, my son says that it takes away all my attention from him. I should just be able to be with him and not be with my phone. Jillian, 20, from Creighton, Saskatchewan. I have gotten the ads that you put on YouTube like 12 times. I need to be unplugged because I'm losing what I truly believe. I work in a mine, and when I tell people that, they think, oh, well, you're behind the desk or you're a secretary, but no, like, I'm, I'm right in there with the guys. I just want everyone to know that I am a genuine person, but don't play me type of thing. And Scott, 19, from Pickering, Ontario. I will use a cell phone, a laptop, my iPod, and maybe play a few video games, and maybe a few more. So as you can see, I spend a lot of time plugged in. I need to find a healthy balance between the real life and my computer life. I don't have to go to a library to find something. I don't have to visit someone's. It's all confined into one tiny little box. Being competitive is healthy, and always being taught to not be afraid and to just to go for what you want has really prepared me. Those few steps you just took in the sand, those are gonna be the first of many that you make. Over the next month, you're gonna experience the adventure of a lifetime. Instead of plugging in to the countless devices that you plug into every day, you're gonna to have to plug into each other. You're embarking on a journey of self-discovery. In the end, only one of you will learn the right to be called the Operation Unplugged Explorer. So are you ready? Yeah! yeah. If the group really want to go on this journey, they're going to have to physically let go of their devices. The current's treacherous, the water's freezing. This is where we're really going to see how much they're willing to take. As soon as they let go, they can come along in the journey. This is their initiation. Get ready to get wet. <laughs> it is the perfect place to test the cold waters and the hold that technology has over each of you. I've told the group to take out their phones and laptops. This is the last time they will get to hold on to their treasured devices. Okay, go down, get in the water. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not really one to dive into the water right away. It was a challenge, and it was at that moment I was like, okay, hey, I'm not giving up. All right, you guys, let's see how long you're willing to hold on to your technology. When I say three, two, one, go, kneel down into the water. All right. Coming up, will the group go down with their devices? I don't know about you, I don't want to sleep in the rain. Chris just doesn't listen to me. Like, he just doesn't. I don't know, we'll just grab what we can right now. And tensions rise. We're gonna need a rock or something. This is not secure. Aye, aye, aye. Eight techno-obsessed strangers have been thrown together and they're being tested like never before. All right, you guys, let's see how long you're willing to hold on to your technology. Get ready, three, two, one, go! Plunging felt like baptism. Just renew yourself, hold up your phone, let go. <laughs> Everything is new. I was really scared because it was windy and the waves were coming in and I thought like, what if I just get sucked under and they push me away and they're thrown all over. I was so scared. Alana, come on out. Yeah. Yes, I got soaked. Come on out. Ah. Jillian, 
Come on out. Vanessa, you went under. For me, the Plunge and Purge was about waking up that energy, that drive to, to, to get better, and at the same time, letting go of what I love so much. Camera, come on out. Good job, man, good job. Yeah. Cat finally lets go. Daniel, Cat, come on out of the water. Yeah, you're done, get out. I don't draw my phone for nothing. <laughs> I'm really proud of the group, and I'm amazed that they were able to let go. Now our journey can really begin. Now that these are officially useless, you guys are gonna need a way to connect. So, we want you to blog in this. This is your way to reach out to yourself, to explore the journey, to capture those moments. This is your new blog. Woo! Yeah! The group leaves Kedji Seaside for the interior portion of Kedjimkujik in the center of Nova Scotia to Kedjimkujik Lake. They have no idea where they're going. Part of truly experiencing the present is to let go of their mobile crutches and start thinking for themselves. I have to be in control of what I see for myself and not knowing and not having control of that destiny for me personally. So that's odd. That's very odd. Hey guys, come on in. We're camping! <laughs> Welcome to Ritchie Island. Come join me up here. Ritchie Island is in the middle of Kedjimkujik Lake. According to local legend, Jim Charles, one of the best guides in the area, was the first to find gold in Kedji. He would give that gold to Judge Ritchie, who's the island's namesake. Judge Ritchie would take it into town to the Annapolis Royale, bring the money back to Jim. This is a perfect spot for us to get the lay of the land. We're gonna have to go for a little hike. Follow me. <laughs> Watch your eyes for branches. Watch your feet. For me to not wear heels, I guess it's kind of good because there's lots of like debris on the ground in the woods and stuff, but I miss heels. It keeps my legs toned. <laughs> it's time to go back. From the mid 1800s to the mid 1900s, people were drawn into the area for the vast wilderness and the big game, but they couldn't go there themselves. They needed to hire guides. Guiding became an important way of life for the locals many of whom were of Mi'kmaq descent. Hey, Ursula, I'm gonna bring the guys in. So I'd like you to introduce you to Ursula. Ursula is a, a cultural interpreter here at Keji. And guess what, guys? The challenge you're gonna to have to do is set up a guide's camp. So. <laughs> this here is a typical guide camp. I wanted them to get back to basics. Back in the day, they didn't have bells and whistles. They didn't have the technology that we have today. They just needed to know how to start a fire, pitch a tent, make it comfortable, and really start to look after themselves. The guides camp's a perfect way to do that. You're gonna have to find three different caches. Stashes of wood, then boughs that you fill your tent with, then on the beach, there's gonna be a stash of the food. Bring them back here and set up your tent. You're gonna have to also start a fire. First team to do it is gonna win the challenge. We're just gonna go guys versus girls. I mean, no. Yes! <laughs> Men against women? Why wouldn't that be fair? If anything, we're stronger than them. If not, we're, we're just as strong. We have just as much chance to win as they do. Well, why don't we just award the, the winners to us now and just call it a day? Why? Why do this? Clearly, we have an advantage. This is so in the bag. Estrogen power. No problem. <laughs> All right. Ready? You have 30 minutes. Three, two, one, go! Coming up, the fun suddenly <laughs> turns serious for Olana. I'm scared of water. And Cameron questions whether he should have stayed at home. Just needs to be open. I think I'm having the toughest time with finding something, you know, great out of this. After surviving the ocean's fury, the dry land test begins. The challenge you're gonna have to do is set up a guides camp. Guys versus girls. Yes! <laughs> Three, two, one, go! 
talk, talk, talk. I'm listening. Just talk. I'm listening. Listen, let's take two seconds. We gotta, we gotta stay together. Let's read about that last. Let's read about that last. Yeah, no, I'm listening. Two guys set up a tent. You and I will go and look for the cash of stuff. I am a very confident person to the point of borderline arrogance. I know who I am and what I can bring to the table. How much wood do we need? Just as much as we can get. Okay, fine. You got some? Okay, let's go back. Okay, where's our site? Okay, first he said 100, then he said 250, and then he said 200. Where's Kat? Are they still looking for the food? Hey, Kat! It feels like it would be a good place to hide stuff in here. I think we should go help them look for their food. <gasps> You've got it? Okay, go, let's go, let's go. There was a bit of slowdown at a certain point. I was surprised how everybody was just like, ready to do their part. Here they come. Now I can't remember what he said about the other one. Is this long enough? Yeah, it's, it's long enough. Are you sure? It shouldn't be hard to spot. It should be in a bag or something. There, see, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there. I got it, right there. I got it, Let's I got go it. Straight. I can help the others. Okay, we got everything. Okay, so we're gonna tie this up top. The branches? Yeah, because we're gonna have to lean those up. Where are you going? <laughs> are we going up there, or are we going to the side? Good thing I cut my nails before coming. Here, Kat, maybe I'll just take my coat and wipe out the middle. Is it berries we're looking for, or is it the, No, not berries. The, the leaf thing. Right here, look. See? Yeah, okay. How are we gonna carry this? We can't I don't know, we'll just grab what we can right now and figure it out as why we don't go. We, why don't we get the tarp from the tent? Okay, well, let's grab and a handful and walk down. Every single time I've interacted with Chris, it makes me really tense around him, and it just makes me want to, like, argue more. We're gonna use the tarps. You got it, you got it? You go, you lead the way. I think we're doing it wrong. <laughs> I was just wanting to Google how to pop a tent and <laughs> how to hammer it in. I think we're going to need a rock or something. I don't think they'll fall over. Uh, this is not secure. Ay, ay, ay. Lay it down there because it's kind of flat. And then... Did they haul their canvas out into the woods? Here, that's good, that's good. Hey, guys. That canvas is going to rip really easy. We've made our decision. We'll carry on. Let's just carry on. I don't know about you, I don't want to sleep in the rain or like... Don't worry about it. If we hear it, hold it tight, we'll be fine. It won't rip. I've noticed that Chris just doesn't listen to me. Like, he just does it. Go, go, go. I can't pull it if you're stepping on it. Just dump it all in here, where it needs to be. They already got a fire started. What is, is this light? Is this? Those are matches. How? That's interesting, okay. <laughs> the way that you win something is that you make it look easy. How do you get it in? There's a hammer. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. What was the picks? deal with the food? Does it have to be put in the fire? No, it doesn't need to be presented. It just needs to be, to be opened. Done? Just needs to be opened. They're almost done. Their food is open. You need more help? Yeah, let's just get these pegs going. All right. I'm running out of strength here, guys. Here, here, okay. Yeah, we need to take- Time's up! Okay, we're done then. I think we did good. I don't think we could have done Let's go it. take a look at the girls' stuff here. Ursula and I judge the camps on the stability of the structure, the fire, and the food. Looks presentable. Yeah. Let's see how the guys did. What do you think? Fire's going. It's going good. The ridge poles seem to work pretty well. There's a lot of sticks poking out, stab you in the bum. All right, Ursula. We kind of saw what each one of them did. So what camp would you want to sleep at tonight? I think I'd probably have to sleep in this one. <laughs> and the girls. We use our teamwork skills, you know? We all picked our own little thing to pay attention to. That's what made us win. Guys, you just got something to work on in the next challenge. We lost points on detail, so I mean, obviously it worked in their favor. I do have one last surprise. Those are your tents tonight. It is? That's oh, where you're yeah. sleeping. You might have been thinking that, so you probably should have built it a little bit better. Okay, now I want to wash my hands because I'm dirty. The group is so used to connecting over a screen. They're used to typing in characters where there's no emotion. The chat circle is our way to really call each other on their BS of the day. It's our way for me to question what I saw. It's a way for them to question each other 
but it's a way for them to connect in person, in real time, and with each other. All right, you guys, day one's down. This is your time to throw it out there. It's been a pretty busy first day. It was so hard. <laughs> I'd say that I am getting better and better at like withstanding cold. <laughs> it's different. I've never done any of this stuff before. No camping, no, no ocean vistas. Has anybody had a self-discovery moment today? Both challenges I thought about my phone. The first one, we were in the water, I was like, oh, it's in my pocket. <laughs> and then the second one, I felt like, you know, the phantom vibrate. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt it a couple times. I was like, oh, no, it's there. I think my discovery is more social based. You don't have that phone to withdraw to anymore. You don't have anybody else to talk about your problems. So <laughs> it's different. I'm still getting used to it. I have several moments where I think about my phone and I'm wondering what my friends are doing and what everyone else is doing. And I'm not there yet, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm still working on letting go of control. Hey, that's good enough for today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've released them back to the tents for their first night under the stars. They are officially unplugged. There's no creature comforts. They've got fur boughs instead of a mattress. They've got a canvas leaky tent instead of a roof. They've got no doors. They've just got wilderness. I'm excited to see who makes it through the night. Wait, 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 wait. what'd you do to the stick first? I just took it raw. Oh, that's no, crazy. man, you gotta sanitize it. I peeled it. Yeah, she peeled it. But yeah, did you <laughs> stick it in the fire? Okay, I'll do that. I didn't. You're saying, you're talking about sanitation. Just, yeah. Look where you are, man. Huh? Daniel. <laughs> and about, he complains about things that I don't know, I don't, I really don't care about. Like he'll, he'll, he'll complain about anything and everything. I'm having, I'm having, I think I'm having the toughest time with finding something, you know, great out of, out of this because I'm finding lots and lots of worse with me. We're filtering some drinking water. I'm a little disappointed in myself, to be honest, because I'm not 20 anymore. And, uh, Perhaps in certain ways it shows. So I do extra chores to keep my mind busy and pitch in in other ways, and that's it. Stripped of technology and relying on themselves, they start to confront new fears. Oh God. I have to adapt. I was so scared, I just covered myself. Chris and Daniel have been forced together in the wilderness. Hold it tight, we'll be fine, it won't rip. Chris just doesn't listen to me, he just does it. I'm a little disappointed in myself, to be honest, because I'm not 20 anymore. Tensions are rising. The first night I slept without sleeping bags, I didn't sleep. I had a, only had a wool blanket, and I heard noises I was so scared. I just covered myself and I was like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. I just felt like something bad was gonna happen. I think if you ever wanna get to know somebody, their true personality, throw them on a bed of pine needles. Everything was wet. The dew of the morning kept us uh, even cold, so I was like shivering. Well, good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. How was last night? Awesome. Eventful. Thor. Well, I just wanna introduce you to Raymond Scott. He's a local guide and uh, he's gonna help us out with taking you to the next level in your training. Hello, good morning. Come on down. Before we get started in today, one of the main things that you proved last night is that you can actually spend a night alone, especially in the clothes you're in. And we've had Atmosphere come on board and actually supply you with every single bit of gear, from clothing to mountain gear, to helmets, to life jackets, everything you're going to need to be able to brave anything that the parks is going to be able to throw at you. Nice. Sweet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to have to work on that skill, Alana. This matches my bathing suit. Looking through their gear, they outfit themselves before meeting me for the next mission. Getting the atmosphere gear was awesome. It just upped the level of comfort. I like this. What they don't know is that Raymond and his family are all world-class lumberjacks, and they compete in what's called a guide's meet. A lumberjack's work is dangerous. There's no gasoline. They didn't have any newfangled gadgets. They had hard steel, and they had to make it work. Raymond and his team are going to show the group how it's done. What is that? Uh, log rolls. Bob the logs. Up and down. 
Splash water. That's basically good log roll. All right, Raymond, do you think you uh, gave them all they need to know? I think they're up for it. <laughs> all right, well, log rolling is not going to be part of the challenge. <laughs> Axe throwing, which was done as a lumberjack event. I used to watch the lumberjack competitions on TV all the time as a kid, and I used to get so excited and like see them do all these events. It's good to like put an actual association to the things that you see on your technology. Back when they didn't have chainsaws, we had the old-fashioned cross-cut saws. Didn't have electric stoves back then. Everybody had to learn to build a fire. Look at that, that's burning pretty good. <laughs> We'll show you how to canoe and teach you a little bit about water safety. We'll start with the paddle. Make sure you reach this top arm out and paddle through. That's your basic forward stroke. Backwards is just the opposite. Daniel and Vanessa, Jillian and Gammer, Kat and Scott, Chris and Alana. The group's seen how to do it, now it's their turn. Out in the outdoors, fire is the most important skill. Making a fire with three matches or less, that's the test. No chopping with the axe, just the shavings only. Get the fire, the water's got to boil over. Everybody ready? Three, two, one, go. Chris, you're not chopping, you're shaving. Cat and Scott got a fire going. Ah, too much. We have one more, we have one more. Daniel working the oxygen on his fire. Julian and Cameron have a great fire going right under the pot. Remember, when you see that boil, you call out the wind. Cat and Scott look close. Julian, watch your face. Yeah, come I was afraid of face blisters or something, you know, like. Thank God I didn't have hairspray in, because I would not look the same. Thank God I didn't have hair. Good job. <laughs> axe throwing comes from when the lumberjacks would walk through the forest leaving for the day. They'd throw their axe from tree to tree because they didn't want to carry it. All right, everybody ready? Go. Ooh. These men are setting the high bar for us, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We had a lot of fun doing the lumberjack. I wanted to put it on my Facebook, and I didn't get that chance, so I felt a bit isolated, and I had to turn to these guys. In first place, Cat and Scott. All right, let's stay right here for the crosscut saw. The crosscut saw is not for the faint of heart. Those are razor sharp teeth. If they don't work as a team, they're not gonna cut an inch. Everybody ready? Three, two, one, go! You're pulling, pull down. Pull, pull. Cat and Scott got a good rhythm going. Done! Yes! Done! Done! Yes! Well done, you guys. Okay, at 38 <laughs> seconds, Chris and Alana. Sweet, sweet. Daddy's back. Ew. Tub racing takes a lot of skill. It may look goofy, but it takes stamina, agility, and a lot of balance. Whoa. Don't touch mine. Stay in the middle, Dad. Here's the deal. You've got to go out. As soon as the front of your tub gets past or in line with a buoy, you got to come back to the dock. Who has ever went in a bathtub and has tried to paddle across a lake? There's no skill involved in that. Everybody ready? Three, two, one, go! Come on, Jill! Oh, careful! Broke it! <laughs> no, no, no! I was so terrified of like 
one wrong move and I was going under. You can turn around from there. Come on, Jill! Almost there! Keep going, Alana, you're doing good, hon. <laughs> it's not working. working. The tubbing was really difficult. Maybe I guess I wasn't doing it properly. Um, it's, it, it stresses me out, it really stresses me out. Got to touch the dock. Here comes Jillian. I'm doing a Jace Trove for me. It wasn't working. I'm a dragon paddler, so this was just too unnatural. Touch the dock. Yeah, Lanny, you're good. You can come back. Touch, touch the board, touch the board. What, this? Great job, Alana. Almost here. I'm scared of water and I've never been on a boat or like in the water by myself so just all the feelings of fear come up and, but I'm glad I did it so just like water traumatizes me. <laughs> I felt so bad you know saying Alana you should have told me never in a million years would I put anybody in that position. But she said, no, I wanted to do it. I was so shocked to see the emotion come out in Alana after that mission. For her to have such a deep fear of the water and to face that fear, I was super blown away. And I think everybody else was too. That's what this journey is about. It's about looking deep into ourselves, overcoming some obstacles, and moving into new areas of learning. Here we go. Coming up on Operation Unplugged. We're going too slow. Barking orders. Not we're not loud. moving at all, right? I mean, seriously, this is eating up my day. And personalities clash. They had already started the fire, and like that was kind of my job to begin with. A group on a personal journey, brought together and challenged for better. Yes. Or worse. Oh, God. Canoeing has always been the best way to see Kedgy because most of Kedgy is only accessible by water. A great guide would be a great canoeist because they wouldn't get their clients wet. Well, it's pouring rain right now, and they're going to have to work as teams to propel their canoe down the length of the course. All right, this is the final mission of the day. Three, two, one, go! I have seen so many canoes tip, so that was like a huge trust thing. You gotta draw into here. I am putting pressure on myself because, I mean, boat is my element. I'm supposed to be good at this. You guys are good. Okay, okay. Jill, you guys are good. Go, go, go. Pull. 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 To go in the canoe with me, half an hour after a bit of a an upset situation. And you gotta commend somebody for that, especially when they know they're gonna be nervous. We're not gonna beat Kat with her experience in this. The girl can bench press a Buick. Hands up when you cross the finish line. Woo! I felt reborn almost, just like getting back in the boat. It made me feel good. I faced it and people witnessed it and then it was just like gone. Keep going, you guys. Yeah. All right, so guys, the winner of the guide's mission, Kat and Scott. Yeah. You guys get to stay in the state-of-the-art camp. And that's full of the shower, the pot set, the light, the tarps. That's where you guys get to spend the night tonight. Everybody else, unfortunately, you gotta go back to the guide's tents with the bows and a little bit of wetness. I'm very excited <laughs> to sleep in something uh, relatively uh, normal. More not, humane. Yeah, and those, those, uh, those, that brush is not the comfiest to sleep on, so I'm definitely excited. I mean, it's great that they get a better tent and you know they're gonna be warm and everything, but 
at least I'll be with two other girls, so. Yeah, same thing. I'll feel safer. I don't like to sleep alone, especially in here. <laughs> yeah. Because last night I was freaked out. The Halifax Citadel National Historic Site was inhabited by British officers back in the 1800s. The officers would come out to Keji on vacation and they would expect that the guides have everything set to perfection. From the camp, to the food, to the way that they hunted, it had to be perfect. First of all, I got the clothes you wanted me to bring? Perfect. First of all, I thought you better look like guides, so we've got traditional guides clothing that you're gonna need to put on. on. Traditional? Yes. You don't have a hat? Yeah, the bald guy doesn't get a hat. <laughs> I'll give you my hat. Look at you, dolls. Everything up to now has been a physical test. This mission is all about the psychological. I have told the officers to get into their face. I've told them to try to break them down and make sure that they meet the standard of perfection at any cost. It's now time for them to see if the skills that they've learned are actually gonna play out into practice. I've got the clients for today, two officers from the Citadel. Okay guys, you've all passed the challenges. Now you're Mi'kmaq guides, and you're gonna take these guys out to Ritchie Island. I'm Mr. Adams, this is Mr. Mosier. You're a soldiers in the 78th Highlanders, the British Regiment stationed in Halifax. It's the keystone fort of the Halifax Defense Complex. Your first mission of the day is to get into the Montreal Canoe, paddle out to Ritchie Island. I'll give you the second half of the mission once you get the officers safely to the island. I'll meet you over at Ritchie. We'll see you in a little bit. The bow and the stern are going to be responsible for making sure that the ship runs efficiently and safely. You're in the stern for sure. We put her on the stern because she is a dragon boater. Where do I go? Anyone not getting in the boat right now is doing it wrong. Get in the boat. Hey, what is going on? Let's go. Cut the ropes. No, Let's I didn't go. tell you to wait. I want to go. No, there was people for that. Well, exactly what is the holdup? If we don't leave soon, we're leaving. It's a piece of rope. You untie the piece of, there we go. Quickly now, quickly. That's a, a child could do this. All right, let's go. We got our outfits on and then we're getting on the boat. We all of a sudden had to go, but we didn't know. Do where? We, yeah, where, we didn't know okay. how. Go, right Dan, 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 push backwards, backwards Dan. Spin us around now. A lot of time we couldn't hear. It was two leaders trying to lead from different ends. Well, I don't know, the time it's, it. you have to be the same amount on the left and the right. Yeah. Now get to one person calling the timing, otherwise you won't know when to move. The only reason why we were zigzagging because we weren't in sync. And the and... current was pretty strong. I was surprised. Why, why are we going back? All right, front, front three left. Please paddle left. Why is someone just splashing me? <laughs> A few times I would just stop paddling and I was like, okay, calm down, calm down, calm they, down. Yeah, I think it was put best when uh, Cam said, uh, there's too many chefs in the kitchen. We're going too slow. Now paddle faster. Dig Pick in. the timing up. Push the water back. Not not at all, right? I wasn't thinking of technology at all. I just wished everybody was paddling. Seriously, this is eating up my day. We are about to hit shore. Slow down a bit, we don't want to break our necks. The paddling all the way here was what really got me in. Uh, just having them belittle you and nagging at you from behind, it, was just, it just kept chipping away. I wanted to either whap them around the head with a paddle or just throw them in the water. Sir, how did they treat you on your trip over? No teamwork, no enthusiasm, there was nothing. Well, here's the second half of the mission. Right in front of you is an actual replica of the camp that they would set up for the officers from the Citadel. It's done to exact specifications and the standard that the officers from the Citadel appreciate. What we're gonna have to do is break you up into teams. Who better are the two people who won the guide skills challenge yesterday are gonna be Scott and Kat. You deserved it, you guys won the team challenge. Kat, you get to be with the guys. Scott, you get to be with the girls. Take your teams, look over the Citadel camp, because you have to set it up exactly the same as it is. Go ahead. I think it might be a, a challenge for me to, to become a leader. You will have to make a fire and boil water. I like being the, uh, the captain. I, I do like to take the, the leadership role. All right, so you guys have had a good look at the camp. I'm gonna give you each a map, team captain. You're gonna have to paddle out and get two caches. That will be all the equipment that you need 
in order to get uh, campsite up to the standard of the officers. First team to have their officers sit down at their table, that team wins. Me and Alana should go first, just well, for pure speed. Hurt. While we're going around taking the like taking the longer route, you guys can get working. Okay. That that is a long point right there. So okay. we're off over there somewhere. You on the fire? Okay, but I don't want to do that. Why isn't that on the map? That yeah. should be like here. This is a horrible map. All right. Yes. Kat, do you guys have a strategy? Yes, we do. Scott, how about you? <laughs> the best strategy ever strategized. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three, two, one, go! Okay, guys, good luck. Coming up on Operation Unplugged. We're on our own pace, it's okay. Turn around. What? Turn around, look! Scott is pushed to the max. It was definitely a challenge because of the sheer patience that you have to have for it. Yeah. I kind of lost my mind. And Cameron calls it quits. I'm pretty sure the team was closer to us than the crumpets were. Yeah. I just gave up because I couldn't take a picture. It began in Kajimkujik in Nova Scotia. Strangers on a journey of self-discovery. This is not secure. Learning to live without technology, no matter what it takes. First team to have their officers sit down at their table, win. What's this hour? As the mission begins, the teams rush to find the materials to erect their tents and get their officer to sit down first. Here's how you win things one small step at a time, slow and steady will win the race in the long run. There's barely any wood in there. Certainly not enough wood to boil water. We want to make the best fire for you. <laughs> the hottest fire. <laughs> Which way? Spoon. No, fork, spoon, knife. I don't want to reach for my spoon and accidentally grab my fork. Look at the other, the other team, look at them. It was definitely a challenge just because of the sheer patience that you have to have for it. I'd... I yeah. kind of lost my head a bit. Over there, look. I regret it now. Well, turn around. We're on our own pace, it's okay. Turn around. What? Turn around! Look! Look! Do you see a gentleman making a fire? Sort and of. there's someone setting up a cot. They're gonna have and to do this also eventually, people so. okay. faffing around with cutlery. Divide up your jobs. This is not a two-person job. He's right here. Let's go. Let's take it. they had already started the fire. And like that was kind of my job to begin with. First of all, to start the fire before you have the tent pitched and like to get the tea ready and everything, like it's gonna get cold. Like nobody wants to drink cold tea. I don't break my cot. Nope, not like that. I expected nitpicking from the beginning. So I made sure it's little things like that that make a really big difference. Agreed. Get it set up as quickly as you can. Good idea, that needs to go in place. Okay, let's do the tent. Let's just get it up. Can we get the map? Do we have reference? Oh, we got nails there, we got nails there. We do? Yes, and a hammer. Brilliant, okay. You keep going. Right in the middle. Right here. Okay. Right where we are. Yeah. There was no communication. It was just chaos. Is that where it's supposed to be? I have no idea. From on the inside? Put it out as much as you can. This needs to be out more. Go, go. Up all rings up. Come down here and grab this pack, Paul. We're doing the tent. Looking good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sturdy. I don't want to fall over and break my back. Scott, it looks like your team's a little ahead at this point. Waiting for spontaneous combustion to take place. It's good. I can't believe it was a young lady said that. Very carefully. Sure. Because I thought the chair was more like it was slanted like this. Yeah, it was over towards the Like, door. but was this shaped? To so bring this slightly. 
Think about the orientation. Wait, who wants to sit and dinner and look at trees? Coming into the challenge and knowing what the result was, we needed to make sure that we, we got all the details. Because the door is here, and then the table was like, I wish I had my phone. I lost focus. I didn't even look at it. I just gave up because I couldn't take a picture. That oh, looks about okay, right yeah, with the tea and then the, and then the, the crumpets. Tea here? Tea here? I'm pretty sure the tea was closer to us than the crumpets were. Facing directly. So you'd want to move in. Directly to where I'm, okay. that's right. Oh, not with your fingers. Yeah! yeah! Woo! Woo! <laughs> to lose this mission, to lose twice actually, is eating me alive right now. I, <laughs> I'm not used to losing. So congratulations you guys, you got your officer to sit down first, you won the officer's mission. Woo! Here we are, last night in Keji. <gasps> <laughs> so thinking about all the things that you've done from the guides camp, could you see the progression of your skills grow a little bit over the course of those, oh, absolutely. those three yeah. days? Yeah. 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 Making absolutely. a fire. <laughs> Pretty good skill to know while you're yeah. out here. It's getting better, I think. <laughs> I feel like the real mission was trying to to not beat those people because they were just killing everything that we were trying to do to make the situation better. We've made it through the first five days. This is only a taste, however, of what they're going to experience as we progress through the journey. Are Daniel and Chris actually going to get along? What will Alana do when she's faced with another water mission? I want to see if they can live without technology, because I'm not convinced. I'm going to kick it up a notch and put them to the test. I haven't won a challenge yet. I think I'm the only one that hasn't. I'm pointing out more weaknesses than I am strengths. Every day I'm more removed from technology, more removed from my kids. I can't not change. I have to adapt. I'm missing my phone more, unfortunately. Um, just because I have been thinking about my family a lot and like my boyfriend and my friends. Next time on Operation Unplugged, crisis in the water. My hands are so shaky. I got her, I got her. By hook or by crook, I'm gonna try and win. People were really getting stressed out. And emotions unravel. Being initially paired with Vanessa, like, great. I'm probably never going to win a challenge. That's what made me break down. The quest to become Operation Unplugged oh. Explorer continues.